Hello and welcome to Nigeria, the road to 2019, a series of programs where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks for joining us. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, all the news, comments and analyses that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including the story of the man Alaji Shewu Usman Aliu Shagari, which dates back to October 1, 1960, when Nigeria gained political independence. At that time, Nigeria had the trappings of a democratic state and was indeed regarded as a beacon of hope for democracy in Africa. Shewu Shagari's political career began in 1951 when he became the Secretary of the Northern People's Congress, NPC, a position he held until 1952. He held several ministerial positions as well, one of which included a member of the Federal House of Representatives for Sokoto West in 1954. Well, today we we'll speak about the life and times of late Alaji Shewu Usman Aliu Shagari, Though well advanced in age, the death of the Second Republic President of Nigeria, Alaji Shehu Shagari, did not fail to elicit reactions of regret and sorrow across a broad spectrum of the Nigerian populace. The humble and unassuming elder statesman was a major participant in the history-making processes of Nigeria's development right from the First Republic to the day he eventually surrendered to the cold hands of death at the ripe age of 93. Shagari is best remembered for introducing the Green Revolution for farmers, low-cost housing scheme all over the country, the building of the Kaduna refinery and starting it that same year. To speak more on his gigantic accomplishment, we turn to Professor Tony Iradia, who served as a member of the management board and director general of the Nigerian Television Authority. In fact, he is also a visiting professor to several universities as a scholar, a writer, a, uh, a publisher, and a columnist. He joins me now. Prof, Thank you. it's so wonderful one of your students too, or your <laughs> pupils having you in the studios on the hot seat, uh, like you taught us then uh, uh, in, in, in NTA Benin, where you started your career from. Great. It's great to see you, Christian. Thank you very much, sir. Now, looking at the enigmatic Alhaji Shewu Usman Aliu Shagari, Nigeria's first executive president during the Second Republic, what are those core virtues that you want to remind Nigerians of? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I happen to be personally affected by the man you are talking about because of the numerous contacts I had with him and the kind of transactions I had opportunity to have with him. The first is the official one, where I did what you are doing now, interviewing. And he was my guest. Uh, just before the interview, he had represented Sokoto in the Constituent Assembly and had argued very strongly against the principle of population. He did not, uh, he, he, was, he was for population because that favored his constituency. And while others were talking about the principle of derivation, he was seen to be on the other side. And so there was this great debate where he had to talk about the purpose of population and had uh, its impact on democracy. So he came on to my program why he wanted to be president of Nigeria in 1979. And I asked him, now that you are for population, why do you think my people should vote for you? <laughs> uh, those of us from the oil producing areas, why should we vote for you? You are against the principle of uh, derivation. derivation. And the man explained clearly that he, as a person, supports derivation. But as a constituent representative, his duty was to project the wishes of his constituency. Yeah. At that point, he had no business other than to support population. But as a person, he preferred to support the principle of derivation. And you could see him speaking so frankly. 
Very, very different from today's politician that will tell you 25 things and 26 could be lies. You know? <laughs> so he, he was quite down to it. He was quite down to it. I enjoyed the program so terribly well. And I, I, I remember I, you even had the late uh, Zeke of Africa on uh, the program on the same too. Series, yes. yes. So I asked him so many questions that I thought would put him off. I told him that uh, all the brigands in Nigeria were in the party, the National Party of Nigeria, and all the criminals were there. And how does he feel being the head of such a political party? He smiled and told me, yes, you are right. All those people you are saying are there, but they are not the only people there. Every other person is there. The young is there. The innocent is there. The Christian is there. The Muslim is there. The Northern is there. You know, fantastic answers. And it was never ruffled. Unlike many other persons, you ask them questions. They oh, allow man. the question to take the better of them. <laughs> so for me, Shagari is somebody that I will forever revere and respect. Now, on a second note, Alanji Shev Shagari was a great friend of my uncle, Professor T. Bello Saige. So several times he had to visit Benin. To, uh, he had to visit Benin. One of them that is most rem uh, remarkable was the 70th birthday of the late Professor Bello Saige. And uh, Shagari came all the way from Sokoto. My uncle and I went to wait for him at the Benin airport. From there we went to the Oba of Benin. And I, I was so taken aback by the level of knowledge this man had about our part of the country. What he had, what he knows about the institutions, the chieftaincy institutions, the traditional institutions, and so on and so forth. That beat my imagination. Then the final one, as DG of NTA, in 2006, I decided to visit Sokoto for some events. And I said, no, I must go and see this man. At this point, my uncle had died. And I uh, hadn't seen since then, so I said, let me go and see him. I hope this won't remind him of my no. uncle and he might break down all of that. What I saw was wonderful. First and foremost, I was to see him at 2 o'clock. I got to the gate at 2 o'clock, and President Shagari was waiting at the gate mm. to receive just a director general of one parastata. He having served as president of, a whole of the whole country. And NTA was an infinitesimal part of what he looked after in his days. He was waiting for me. He was waiting for me because of his culture. He was waiting for me because of his sense of responsibility, his strong character, yes. and his love for positions and authority. Yes. And I went with him. We sat in his very simple living room. He had a small TV set on top of the place. And I said, ah, Mr. President, does this not uh, spoil Strain your eye? Your eyes. He said, no, no, no. I said, OK, no problem. And uh, after our discussions, I left there and directed that a plasma be put there Mostly. the very next day. <laughs> <laughs> My staff in NTA Sokoto, they knew the kind of person I was. Oh, yes. They did not only put it there. They <laughs> made sure they filmed it <laughs> and sent to me. So. That is uh, all I, I, I want to talk about him uh, because of the kind of things he has done on a personal note. On a personal note. Yes. Uh, if we go on, we can now talk about his, the, policies, his policies and the rest, which, yeah. which we're going to do uh, definitely in the course of the program. Now, look at his death, the significance of his, of his death, and 35 years ago, the late first executive president of Nigeria, Shew Shagari, was overthrown by the then General Muhammadu Buhari. What a cruel reminder or coincidence of history this is. Well, honestly speaking, for me, uh, that has not even occurred to me in terms of the coincidence. Mm. What has occurred to me is the tributes that I've been reading, what everybody has said about Shagari, or that all of these things round counter to why he was removed. So we begin to ask ourselves if this man was all of these that we're saying he why was. Why was he removed? Why was he removed? And not only why was he removed, why was he condemned in remover? I mean, if it was just a question of <laughs> coup and you took over power, no problem. But 
Why did we need to say that these people were bad? So it, 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 it boils down to our society. And we have to be very careful because many of us are fond of attacking government, of putting everything at the doors of step, the doorsteps of the government. I, I, I defy a little bit. I think that many of those who, who act in Nigeria, they act in line with public opinion. They act in line with what people keep saying. Today, everybody is condemning the government of the day. Yeah. In 35 years' time, they will tell us that this government we are condemning now is the best we ever had. Just as we are all talking about Shagari now. You know? So our people have to be a little bit more careful about the spirit of condemnation that is so high in them. They're fond of condemning almost everything. We don't talk about what goes right. We all talk about what goes wrong. Prof, we're going to compare the Second Republic, if you remember the interregnum before the birth of that republic, mm -hmm. and another interregnum, and this republic. Uh, but I just want to ask you, from what you had said, the condemnation, Nigerians are too quick to go condemn. This was a man who was described as gentle, incorruptible, but when he was overthrown, they said he was surrounded by corrupt aides and the rest. Can you really just oppose this with the uh, government who overthrew him there? It's not just the government that overthrew him. It's every government. You see, take one sentence. He was surrounded by bad people. Mm -hmm. Do you know any government in this country that has not been said to have been surrounded by bad people? Just like it's been said now. <laughs> that, is, that is the point I'm making. You know, if we are too quick and that is leading us into so much problem. Today we are all struggling to decentralize. We are struggling to regulate the country in such a way that it do, does not become too bogus. It does not have too large a center and too weak a number of branches. Mm. Now, how did we get to where we are now? We got there because Nigerians were all supporting nationalism, coming together, one Nigeria, indivisible. You don't have to be one to be indivisible. Mm -hmm. A man with a family has 12 children. There are 12. The family is one. So we didn't need to have just one Nigeria. We didn't need to combine everything. We didn't need to put all powers at the center in order for Nigeria to be one. We didn't need that. You can have a weak center, you can have a strong center, you can have a moderate center. But when you all agitate, you know, and you find these are our laws, today we are, it's going to be a big thing trying to change the, rev, the, the, the uh, rev, uh, formula uh, for revenue, revenue allocation. It's going to be a big deal because we all came together at that point to do that. Today we are all angling against people getting what is their due. Tomorrow the resources may change. Then we suddenly don't some some people that resource control is not, not really a bad thing. Mm. That resource control is not negative. That those who are asking for resource control are not uh, revolutionary. They are not revolutionaries. They are not. They are not negative. They are saying that the country should be run properly. They are saying that we should all have a sense of belonging. When you watch what happens in Nigeria, if something goes to the north, one goes to the south. Yoruba West. One goes to the east. The three people believe that everything is okay. Are there three people in, in Nigeria? <laughs> so when you see a lot of people, look, go, check, check our system. People tell you, oh, we don't have anybody in government. We don't have any government, anybody in government. You go and look. They have over and above others who are not saying anything. So we must learn to be a little bit uh, less greedy. We must learn to accommodate ourselves. We must learn to have a country that we all agree we want to. That's why I agree with those who, who are talking about taking another look. Restructuring? Restructuring. You are a proponent? I believe in it. I believe in From it. From the state level or going back to regionalism? No, it is not the structural thing that is my issue. My yeah. issue is that we must have a system that does not create room for domination. We must have a system that encourages competition. We must have a system that allows people to grow at their own pace. Isn't it not being a leadership problem? Because all the human and material resources you can think of anywhere in the world, Nigerians are very competitive. Yeah. When you talk of mineral resources, there's hardly anyone you don't find in each state. 
in that is available in the world that you don't find in Nigeria. What's our problem? Our problem is greed. Our problem is ethnicity. Our problem is personalization. Our problem is inward looking. We are always inward looking. You see, because today, Nigeria has been winning some medals in some competitions. The most consistent is the Super Falcons. All right? Why is there no federal character there? Why don't we choose our team? Using Based the federal, federal character. Yes, so that we bring one, we take one player from the, this, we take another player from the, why don't we? We did not. We got the best. They won the cup for us. We are all happy for it. Now, whenever we want to create this unity, we start to say things about federal character. They don't believe in it? They don't believe in it. It was unnecessary, the creation of, you know, by the Constituent Assembly in 1976? I don't know whether the, 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 the creation is the problem. I think the problem is how it is managed. The implementation is the problem. You know, we are fond of just abusing things. Like, for example, you, you are heading a place and you want to bring somebody from your area. You don't look at the fact that there are so many people better than him. You start to preach federal character. So it becomes an alibi for incompetence. It becomes an alibi for promoting those who could not make it. You say, oh, there's nobody from so so place. Why is there nobody? There's no state in this country that cannot produce people. So why is there nobody there? And if you take 20, 30 people into an organization and 15, 16 of them find their way to other places and there becomes vacuum there, so do those who did not go away have to wait for you to go and bring people from other states to come and meet them before you can progress? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Professor Tony Radia. Um, we'll just uh, take a pause while we cross over live now to Sokoto State on telephone to get a sense more of what the atmosphere feels like after the demise of the legendary Shehu Shagari, first executive president of Nigeria. We now speak to Dr. Mukhtar Shagari, who is a former minister of water resources and also a deputy governor of Sokoto State. Hello, uh, Dr. Mukhtar, are you with me? Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, very pleasant evening. Uh, well, it's uh, a mixed grill of tributes that has been pouring in for your mm -hmm. late uncle, uh, yeah. a statesman, statesman, uh, ex and late president, Shehu Shagari. Quickly bring us up to speed about uh, the atmosphere in Sokoto and Shagari uh, village. Well, the, the atmosphere is somber. Uh, people are sad. But you see, we are Muslims. We believe that uh, every soul must test death. And uh, we are so grateful to God that he has spent his time in this world servicing this country, servicing humanity, and he left a legacy of integrity and honesty and simplicity. We have just finished the three-day prayer with the governor and all the madams here and so on and so forth. But, you know, it is sad to lose somebody like him. But we give thanks to God Almighty for giving us as a family and for giving Sokoto State and this nation and the African continent, a personality of uh, this nature that had just left this uh, mortal world. Yes, uh, Doctor, tell me how are the people on the street, you know, reacting uh, to the death, particularly his legacies? Has he been described by the people generally? Well, actually, uh, uh, first of all, I'm a barrister, I'm not a doctor. Uh, the people of Sokoto State are sad to have lost this gentleman, a man of honesty, a man of honor, a man that serves this state as a teacher, as a commissioner, served this nation as a minister, served this nation as commissioner for finance, served this nation as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who nobody in Sokoto State will utter any word to say that this man, during his sojourn on this earth, has hurt me or done anything bad to me. He, is hum he was humble. He received everyone in his house, listened to people's problems, and advised them accordingly. Where he can solve the problems, he would. Where he will not be able to solve the problems, he will tell you the truth. 
the people of Sokoto State are really missing this, this uh, gentle soul that has just left us. Yes, indeed. And uh, we know that eminent uh, personalities across the country have been uh, paying tributes and visiting uh, personally, like we heard of uh, former President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, you personally received them. You want to tell us more about uh, the visitations of uh, Nigerians, you know, to uh, the family home of the Shagaris? Yeah, well, um, the thing is this, we are so overwhelmed, we are so happy and we thank Nigerians, especially our leaders that have been coming in to Sokoto to condone with us and to sympathize with us. President Obasanjo was here. Uh, former Vice President Nomadi Sam was here. The Senate President was here. Governors of Kaduna State, governor, uh, and, uh, and of course Borono, and, and of course some other states and other personalities have been coming into Sokoto State because this man, he was for all of us. He was for this nation. He served this nation so well. I actually always tell people, that uh, I learned so much from him. He taught me, he put me on the road to, to, to actually humility and to service to this country. And I want to say that uh, on the at the time he was overthrown as president of Nigeria, when we check on his account, he had only 19,000 naira in his personal account. And it was 19,000 naira because his salary for December had just been paid. And we also discovered that he was owing First Bank 5,000 naira. So if you minus 5,000 naira out of 19, it means at that point in time he had only just about 14,000 naira that he could call his own. That is Sheo Shagari for you. And that is what leaders of this country should emulate and all of us. Yes, indeed. Just the final one. What uh, would the family be, you know, asking the government or how would the family want uh, the late president to be immortalized? Well, I don't think, I don't think we need I don't think we need to ask the government for anything. This man spent all his life serving Nigeria. He spent all his life, he spent his life as a teacher, then as a politician, as a minister in the First Republic, as a minister in Gawan's government, as commissioner in Osman Farouk's government, and as president of Nigeria, and he left office with nothing. He did not steal money, he did not have land, he did not have property. He lived a life in accordance with the with, with tenets of, of Islam and according to the teachings of Sheikh Madam Fodu and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. So it is for the government to know what they will do for him because he did not ask us to ask any government or anybody to do anything. He has put us on the right path of how best we can take care of ourselves. We do our best, but it is up to the government to do whatever they think is befitting for him. But it is important to know that he served his country, this country with all his might and with all his time and with all his energy. And he left it uh, with integrity and dignity and respect. One last question, final one. Are you privy to any uh, wish or wishes the late president uh, made before he passed on? Well, we have always discussed this country with him, especially myself. All he wants is that this country should remain united and that we should love one another and that we should serve this country with honesty and sincerity. And we should also know that we have no any other nation other than Nigeria. So for him, it, is still, it was still uh, in his mouth and his tongue that it is always be one nation, one destiny, united under God, where love and peace should always prevail. That has always been his wish, and that is why he serviced that this country with all his might and with all that he could give to this nation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Barrister Mukhtar Shagari, former Water Resources Minister and Deputy uh, Governor in Sokoto State, who is uh, the nephew of the late President Sheo Shagari. He joined us earlier from Sokoto. You're watching Nigeria, The Road to 2019. Plenty more still ahead. Do stay with us.